shut my door now. I can kind of relax and keep relaxing. Can we call this okay. one the Barry Joe Stull uh, show? <laughs> one through whatever. They think we're at four. No, we're at six. Barry Joe Stull. Can I say? Can I just pronounce the Germanic st? That's why I trip on your name. Is I want to say right. Stuhl. I don't no, want to say stuff. No, 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 actually, uh, it's uh, where I'm from, mm -hmm. it rhymes with owl. Stowl? It's Stowl. Stowl. Okay, in Pennsylvania, where the part of Pennsylvania I'm from, you can easily qualify it as having a lazy mouth. Stowl. 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 So, <laughs> so, uh, my, my sister's husband, name, it's spelled Y-O-U-G-H, and rhymes with what you would say would be the, uh, the business uh, uh, stock report, Gal Jones, right? Mm -hmm. So Y-O-U-G-H rhymes with Gal. Wow. So does S-T-U-L-L. They're all the same. It's Powell. It's all Powell. It's like, it's like we have Powell Boulevard in Florida, like P O W E L L, or, or the bird Powell. It's kind of like that. Yeah. But it's really just the closing of your mouth. Mm hmm. Okay, yeah. No, that makes sense. It's just making one word. Ow. You know, it's like when you, you, know, when you, you know, leave yourself, when you fuck yourself, you say ow. But that's all it is. It's just a lazy mouth. It's, a, it's like, the, the, uh, the least amount of things you could possibly do to say what you're saying, you know. It's Pennsylvania, which it's, city? Pennsylvania, it's... it's or which the region? West East, West the west side? The, of the Gulf of Mexico side of Pennsylvania. <laughs> that side, okay. <gasps> okay. You see the difference? Pittsburgh? Yeah, because it's the Gulf of Mexico was our port. Oh, I see. I do see. Yes, okay, now I do see. The, the Appalachian Mountains caused the Whiskey Rebellion because the Pennsylvania farmers in the Pittsburgh area saw that the tax on whiskey was uh, an unfair, uh, uh, unfairly impacted them compared to others because they could condense, so to speak, the wheat or whatever, the grain in the whiskey and transport the whiskey over the Appalachian Mountains instead of taking the wheat itself over the Appalachian Mountains, the rye over the Appalachian Mountains, which is a big deal. If you look at them on the map, they're kind of like laying down the fingers of your hands, and that's what the mountains are, just one ridge after another after another, so much that the Air Pike in Pennsylvania has a bunch of tunnels I remember going through when we went from our place to the New Jersey coast. Mm. And there's, there's tunnels to get through just to get from east, east to west in Pennsylvania. There's tunnels through the mountains. Mm -hmm. And, you know, shit, we did that here in Portland because the mountains are right here by downtown. But, you know, most places you don't tunnel through mountains much. Wow. I finally realized the East yeah, Coast vibe. I mean, I mean, there are these tunnels that are like, oh shit, I don't know, like, they be a mile long? Yeah. Well, thank That's you for way. coming to Oregon. Thank you for bringing yeah. a little taste of the East Coast to Oregon. I think you've helped Oregon immensely. Thank you, Barry, for your service. Well, well here's, here's what's so, so freak show about it all, all right? There's a, there's a book called... Uh, the man who built the bridge, John Roebling and his son. Washington Roebling was born in Saxonburg, Pennsylvania, about 1934, 5, 6, somewhere like that, right? Mm -hmm. And his father, John Roebling, invented the wire rope in Pennsylvania, in Saxonburg, where he was kind of, you might think of him as a failed farmer, right? Mm -hmm. And apparently he wasn't that good of a musician, but at least he knew from having gone to engineering school in Germany before he immigrated to the United States. 
Oh, uh, he knew a little bit about suspension, like your guitar string over the bridge. It's called right. Mm -hmm. So uh, he he uh, he made his way doing some um, canal work when they were doing uh, canals over over uh, most likely other waterways because you'd have a, a river or something like that that the canal boats would have to cross the river by. You know, going from the, the across on a bridge, right, and over the high high line, right, instead of instead of dipping down to the river, which was not what the canal boats were all about, right. So he had to build these water watertight bridges that the canal boats could go on. And the interesting thing about um, a, a canal boat on a canal bridge that's full of canal water. Mm -hmm about this is very nice but it is uh it is about bridges and i i watched a really good bridge collapsing uh video or like an opb thing like a public television thing i just i kind of believe i'm unprepared to host bridge shows it's very fascinating i guess we do need bridges Uh, of course. 
course, in that alternative history, that would have been expensive of the Brooklyn Bridge, which is still there. Mm -hmm. And it was like an 1880 project. But in all of his infinite brilliance and wisdom, uh, John Roebling uh, died as a product of two things. One was when they were citing the landings where they're actually going to have the Brooklyn Bridge, be the Brooklyn Bridge, you know, somebody had to go say X marks this fall on the riverbank, right? So they were figuring that site out, and some shithole came in with a barge too fast and ended up smacking old John Roebling in the foot. And it crushed his foot, and they ended up getting an infection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And based uh, on his prior experiences and, and his ongoing belief, uh, he thought that running cold water on a, on, cold water was the cure, it's a hydrotherapy, it was, that's what he was calling it, and there was a belief that, that cold water was the cure for anything. Yeah. And instead of using what might have otherwise been available, which is say that, I mean, how many qualifiers can I list there? Instead of using what might have otherwise been available, he relied on this uh, hydrotherapy, and he got the uh, tetanus and died. Okay. And his son, da -da -da -da, who was also a school-trained engineer, although uh, going to college in Troy, New York, Washington Roebling from my hometown completed the Brooklyn Bridge, and in the process, invented the band. You know what scuba divers get? The or bends. The, the bends, yeah, yeah. So it bended that. Washington Roebling invented the bends. Oh, no. Yeah, what happened was they had these things called caissons. And what it was, it was a giant airtight, watertight, depending on what side you were on, uh, you know, thing. They were a big room that they were in that they built. Right? Mm -hmm. And what these knuckleheads did, and you know, they were brave as hell, is they took these building things that they got inside and they put a bunch of what eventually became the uh, the stonework for the, the piers for the bridge. They're out there in the water, right? They put this shit on top of this wooden thing and then pressed it down onto the river bottom and they pumped air in there and they went down there and they dug. And the further they dug, the more this thing sank down to the bottom. And that was their idea. They're going to dig all the way to the bottom and get all the muck out of the way until they finally get down to bedrock or something that they can build this bridge on, right? And so they get down to a certain level, and they're pumping air into this vessel. It's called a caisson, just like the caisson, keep rolling. I don't know what their caissons are, but these things are called these pressure, you know, box you're in. Right? And these guys were down there, and they're working by lamplight, and the, you know, it's got to be some freak show colors, and the, the, the oxygen that they're breathing, it's got to be completely contaminated with, you know, oh, holy shit. So anyhow, they're taking all this muck out, and they get to a certain depth, that when they come back up to the surface, it's like the magic number, where it actually causes the nitrogen in their blood to boil. <gasps> Okay. So you want, you want to hear a song? Can you hear very well? I was just thinking about this guy, Sam Mirren. For some reason, he died. I never knew him. Veggies? Broken. Oh, I would offer you veggie soup too, Barry, but I don't believe it's possible through the telephone. Yes, I. Why? Because I don't care. Oh, I'm lifting weights and listening to music while you talk about bridges, and now George is having soup. Oh, okay, Right. 
Nick Fish. I'm going to write a short story about the time Nick Fish walked up to the glass window and we glanced at each other and I was like, wow, that's a nice suit. And then I was like, wait a minute, that's Nick Fish. Then Nick Fish and I had one little moment and it was, um, it was lovely. He was like a, a suit model on a catwalk. And then he just happened to work for the city government. That was just his day job to his real job, which was being that cool dude. It was, um, I was alone eating a salad at the vegetarian restaurant in Portland. I shook my head at Broadway one night. Are we having a Nick Fish seance or what? No, 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 no. I'm just thinking that, you know, I had to sort of de-escalate the vibe when Laura Vanderland was chasing him like, why did you block me on Twitter? Why did you block me on Twitter? And I go up to him and I'm just like, what's your star sign? I've heard you're a Virgo. And he's like, no, I'm a Libra. And we were both collectively like, thank God, at least he's not a Virgo. He's a Libra. <laughs> And then he was, like, aware that I was cool with him because I can com be compatible with Libra somewhat. So we had a little star sign moment. <laughs> as Laura's, like, following him in, I think filming him as she asks him why he blocked her on Twitter. And that, that was in front of City Hall. It was nice. Well, I have, I have a couple of Nick Fish signs here. And they're Nick Fish from Portland. Oh, wow. Called Jeremy Solds Ginsburg. He lives about 16th, close to. Enjoying uh, Sam Marin and Marion Bell's uh, band called Melt, the bad B word. I hope you enjoyed the music. I don't know if you heard some background music. I was. Oh, you're a little. Mr. Ang. All right. So you see what I'm saying? I mean, do you want to know what I think besides total boredom, which is 100% of what I think? But if I were to have any additional thoughts on whatever you're trying to tell me, is I think you're talking about four letters or maybe some number letter game where you switch letters around. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, so what's... Am I supposed to be amused, or am I supposed to laugh, or say how clever, or what? 
hour rule once for at least five minutes he when the uh, experts came in to testify about remember the 48 hour rule was after we shoot someone we get like 48 hours to go out to dinner and figure out a story he yeah. he literally yeah the, the consultants were in and I was like I was like wow Nick good job for being concerned as an attorney way to go it was good Yeah, he stood up. He stood up to the uh, Portland police's. I mean, for a moment, and I, I'm not too sure. You know how he was. He was sort of discursive, and he could like make a point and quickly retreat from his point, his own point, mid sentence. Yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do. Hey, who, who took his place as uh, as uh, parks commissioner? <laughs> I think that was it, Miss Miss Fish. No, Miss Fritz. Hey, but wait a minute. What's up with this Sam Adams? Let's make the next show about Sam. Let's close this one down and let's talk Sam Adams. <laughs>